Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to The Why Show, created by the New Jersey Prevention Network. Our host for today's segment is Trent Smith with Goodwill Easter Seals of Miami Valley, Michael Mann with Umadop of Dayton, and myself, Tamara Cantrell with Umadop of Dayton. Joining us via Zoom are Gail Daffler and Adina Wingfield, both of Goodwill Easter Seals, Miami Valley. They will be available to facilitate our chat via Zoom. We will also like to introduce our interpreter, Mary Vanis, with Community Services for the Deaf, and thank Commissioner Judy Dodge for the wonderful suggestion to include an interpreter for our episodes. Today's WISE session will be on Lesson 2, Aging Sensitivity. Before we get into that, Trent will recap Lesson 1 from last month. These episodes provide valuable information that can be utilized for yourself and to share with others. So please feel free to grab pencil and paper and take note and participate with us. We will also provide you with contact information at the end of the show if you would like handouts or more information on the lessons we cover. I will now turn it over to Trent, who will do our recap from last month. Great, thank you so much, Tamara. It's so great to be here, and we're so proud of this program that we're doing. Um, last uh, month, if you're unable to join us, we did our program on understanding the changes associated with aging. Um, and it was a great program, and we had four activities. And during those activities, we had, um, we covered lots of wonderful information. And one of the things was, the first activity was, uh, we dispelled the myths associated with aging. There's a lot of myths out there, and we, they played a game, so we introduced the myths. And we learned that you can continue to pursue happy, healthy lifestyle, and you can learn activities and, and participate in life, um, even as we're, as we're getting older. In activity two, uh, we learned about the top 10 causes of death in the U.S. per the CDC um, data from 2013. Um, I believe they also gave some information on um, the Montgomery County, um, which was very interesting. Um, but we explored information about, you know, what led to those deaths and lifestyle changes about, you know, how to make us healthier. Um, the third activity, uh, we discussed lifestyles and behaviors that put us at risk for illnesses and premature death. Um, so we, we explored um, like re resiliency strategies, you know, to counter those risks. Because there's a lot of those out there, right? So in doing so, we learned to promote healthy lifestyles. Um, and finally, in activity four, um, they, we learned about aging and depression. Um, it's very important to never mistake depression as a normal process in aging. So instead, please see it as a, a treatable medical condition. And that medical condition, um, you can get help for that. So seek help or refer other people if you do find people who are also depressed, um, because there's lots of help out there for people. Um, so now I would like to turn it over to Mr. Michael Mann to introduce this lesson, this month's lesson. Thank you, Trent. Uh, today, we will be talking about aging sensitivity. The purpose of today's session is to explore what it means to age in our larger society and for each of us personally, how aging is for each of us, of us personally. This lesson has three activities. The first activity will explore the effects of aging. In this activity, we hope that you will gain a better understanding of the biological changes associated with aging. The second activity talks about aging in the new millennium and strives to give us greater insight into our own feelings about aging. And the third activity, we will talk about the pros of growing older so that we have a heightened awareness of the advantages of growing older. Now, Ms. Tamara will begin activity one. Thanks, Michael. 
All right, for activity one, we're going to explore the effects of aging on the body's organs and systems. This is important because having a good understanding of the normal biological changes we experience as we age will help us be able to prepare for and accept these changes. In this activity, we will go over some common effects of aging and ask you to identify which organ or system is affected. There you have a display of our different body organs and systems. And we're gonna briefly review each one of those so you can have an idea of what they do. All right, our first one we have is the muscles which control our movement. Next, we have our hair, and yes, our hair isn't just for our looks. It actually serves to keep us warm and it acts as a protectant against certain particles in the air. So our eyelashes help to keep um, things from getting into our eyes. We have the respiratory system, which help us to breathe um, in and out, and it also helps remove gases from our, toxic gases from our bodies, such as we breathing in oxygen and breathing out carbon monoxide. Our nails serve to protect our fingertips and help us to pick up things as well. So the cardiovascular is, uh, system is responsible for maintaining blood flow throughout the entire body. And the male reproductive system functions to help support the urinary system as well as the transportation of nourishment of sperm for fertilization. And the female reproductive system serves as to produce eggs to, for fertilization um, and foster environment for baby development. And skin, skin's really important, right? So the skin functions as a barrier to protect against disease, infection, and injury. It also serves to regulate temperature and sensations along with sensation of touch. The ears, they promote hearing and balance. The nose allows us to breathe and smell and is associated with taste. The eyes, they allow us to see. This represents the nervous system, which transmits messages to and from different parts of the body. And finally, our lymphatic, lymphatic system manages the fluids in our body, fights infection, and absorbs some fat from our intestines. All right, now that we have briefly went over our body organs and systems, let us get into our activity. This is a trivia style game. In this game, we will state the effect that happens to our bodies as we age, and I want you all to give us the body organ or system that we just went over that may be affected. All right, so question number one. As we age, what organ or system begins to give us difficulty with glare and problems with night driving? All right, let's see what you got, Trent and Michael. All right, this is correct. Yeah. It is okay. the eyes. Got it. All right. All right, next question. As we age, what organ or system is affected by loss of taste, making it less enjoyable to eat? Yeah. Let's see. No, is it the mouth? No. no, I got uh, one minute. Yeah. Oh, well. It actually is the nose, so Michael, I think that you got this trivia one correct. Great. Right. Let's go on to our next question. This body, organ, or system begins to have involuntary movements as we age. Uh, Which one? It's, it's, it's actually the muscle. Oh, yay. Ow. I thought it was the Got nervous right. system. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, as we age, this body, organ, or system may give us difficulty with balance. Do you all know this one? Uh, is it? Maybe ears? Ears. Maybe. 
Yeah, that's what I think. All right, that yeah. is correct. This okay, is go. the ears, and this happens due to thickening of the eardrum and bones of the inner ear. Wow. All right, the next question here is, how's this? The effects of aging diminishes our sense of taste for this body organ or system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 hand. No, I think I think the answer is the mouth. I think it's the mouth. It is. It is. Okay. Now for the mouth, you guys, mm -hmm. um, women. Uh, this happens to women when they're 40 to 50 years old. For, for men, it happens between 50 and 60. So I guess they can taste better for longer. The longer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bummer. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> As we age, this body organ or system appears duller and may become yellowed or opaque. What you got? Now? It's actually the nails. Look like you both got it. All right. right. Okay. Yay. All right. All right. So we're doing good so far. All righty. So this system becomes thinner as we age. This comes thinner as we one. age. That's right. I'm doing good. <laughs> you are doing good. You are doing good. Yes, our hair. And as we said earlier, the hair is very important in so many ways, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. All right. So our next question: What body organ or system is affected by a respiration decrease as we age? Do y'all know that one? Mm. Let's see. I'm waiting on you. All right, I think Mike got you on that one. This is our oh, respiratory, it's the respiratory system. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's our respiratory. All right. All right. How about this? Age affects the body, organ, or system by being more wrinkled, rough, bruises, and tears more easily. I got that one. I don't think. I think she's got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I think our answer is skin, skin, that's the skin. <laughs> okay, this body organ or system is affected by increased blood pressure as we age. What do y'all think? Blood pressure. Oh, yeah. Okay, that is correct. It's the cardiovascular system. All right. All right. This body organ or system is affected by diminished capacity to fight off infection as we age. What do you all think for that one? You, get, you know that one? Right? No. Look like Mike got it. It's the lymphatic system. Oh. All right. I didn't know what that was for. Okay. All right, so age affects this body organ, organ or system through the decline of the level of testosterone. Uh. Yeah. I think you guys got it right. They got it right. That's the male reproductive system. This body organ or system has less estrogen secreted as we age. I think I got it. Let's see what you have. Ms. Tamara. We good? Okay, yeah, male, female reproductive yeah. system. Yeah. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct, Trent. Yay. All right, everyone, and this is our last question. What body organ or system is affected by the following as we age? Nerve cells transmit messages more slowly than in the past. What do you all think that was? Oh. Have it right? Yep, that is the nervous ah, system. That is the nervous system. All right. 
This wraps up our activity one, and now we'll hand it over to Miss Trent to go into activity two. All right, thanks so much. That's a lot of fun, and you know, I think that, uh, you know, we learn so much about the body and stuff, and sometimes, like, I don't know, the lymphatic system, I didn't know. Yeah. But I didn't know that one. I learned, so I learned something new every day, right? Yeah, it constantly changes, it too, does, as we It age. does, it does. Yeah. Well, so thank you, Tamara, for passing this on to me. Um, in this activity, we're going to talk about aging in the new millennium. Um, so get your pens and paper ready uh, so you can play along with this fun activity. So you're going to have an opportunity to create something, your own thoughts. So have an opportunity to write those down and, um, and maybe even share them with friends later. So you're probably familiar with the word gerontology. Um, it is the scientific study of biological, psychological, and sociological phenomenon associated with life in the later years. So the root word of gerontology is geron, and it's Greek, and it has three meanings. It means old man, growing older, and awakening. Um, so I think when we think about awakening, um, to me that is such a positive word. Um, and I, and I, so what does, what does awakening mean to you all? What do you guys, what do you guys um, think, Michael and Tamara? I view awakening as coming into a new experience mm -hmm. um, based on what our past has taught us so that we can enter in and develop in a new way. I think that's what awakening is. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think awakening is, you know, as we see things through our lens, as we get older, you know, we become more experienced, our lens and our experiences take us to different places. Now we see things more clearly, we see things differently, you know, yeah. uh, and, uh, and we also see things a little differently than our grandkids do because they're always saying to me, <laughs> uh, we don't do it that way anymore. <laughs> 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 so they're, they're, they're trying to teach you some new things too, huh? That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I see awakening as such a wonderful thing. And, and sometimes we think growing old is, um, you know, that maybe has a negative connotation. And I, um, I just always like to think as I'm moving up there, because, you know, I'm there. Um, <laughs> um, and having, you know, finding the positive things in life and, right. and finding new activities and things. So, um, so in this activity, we're actually going to create our own um, statement of what it's, what is the aging in the new millennium, all right? So I'm going to start with my statement. So, um, but oh, before I do that, let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to tell. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. Um, first, we're going to we're going to take all three of us will have our own statements. So Michael and Tamara and I have both all come up with a statement, and then we're going to combine them, and we're going to make one small group statement, right? Okay. And then um, after that, our Zoom facilitators, um, Adina and Gail, are uh, have created their own statement. Uh, their statements, they combine them, and then they gave them to us, and so we're going to have their own small group statement. And uh, then finally, we're going to put all of those together, and we're going to come up with one big statement of what it means to be aging in the new millennium. Um, what I want everyone else who is involved watching the show um, to think about that. Think about what aging in the new millennium means to you. What does, what does, um, uh, what you know, what does awakening mean? I guess when I come back to that, I love that word. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna share my personal statement, all right? So to me, okay, aging in the new millennium is living your life with the wisdom you have gained and sharing time and experiences with family and friends. So Mr. Mann, could you share yours? Yeah, I, yeah, I'd like to have fun. So I look at aging in the new millennium as gaining wisdom, having fun, and enjoying life. Right. Tamara, what about you? 
All right. Uh, to me, aging in the, in the new millennium can just be a time to enjoy all the things that you have achieved in life. So that's what it is to me. That's wonderful achievement. Yeah. That is great. Well, so I guess what we want to do then is we want to take all three of those statements, right? And we're going to combine them together through the magic of, of TV. <laughs> we have done so. Um, and so our statement, I think maybe you guys will, will agree with here, is aging in the new millennium is as a time to enjoy life, continue to learn, share wisdom, and spending time in family with friends. What do you guys think? Did we, did we get, do good with putting that together? Yeah, I think that pretty much touches on what we all said about aging. Excellent. Excellent. Sounded great. Excellent, wonderful. All right. So we now we're going to show off what Gail and Adina shared to us. Um, and they're our Zoom facilitators, and so they put together their own. So theirs says, uh, it's defined as aging, as embracing change, understanding the value of time, acknowledging aging is not always easy, but worth the experience, learning the beauty of love, life, family, and friendship. Well, I think they did a really good job. Yeah, you? they did. Absolutely. Very yeah. thoughtful. Absolutely. So from all of those, if we put them all together, I think we came up with a good statement, so you guys let me know what you think. So, um, our final statement is, uh, aging in the new millennium can be enjoying life, family and friends, despite challenges, as we can continue to live and learn along with sharing wisdom and valuing, valuing the time we have. Um, well put. Yeah, yeah we, did, we did good, didn't we? Great statement. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I hope that I hope that people at home, um, or in the Zoom or everything, are coming up with their own ideas um, and um, come away with the idea that you know, growing old and awakening can be a wonderful thing, and there's lots of things that they can do. Um, and I think that our Zoom, um, I mean, our podcast later probably has they're they're going to be. Uh, talking about some of these things too. I'll go touch on that, so that was great. it'll be fun. Yeah. All right, so Mr. May, will you go ahead and, and take our final activity? Uh, yes, thank you, Trent. Welcome. In this activity, we're going to discuss some of the pros of growing older. And again, uh, like Trent said, I would suggest that you take out a, a pencil and paper uh, because we uh, would like everyone to, uh, to write down 10 pros of growing older. If we are to promote our new definition of what it means to age in the new millennium, we need to be able to convey all the advantages of being older in our society. In this, in this activity, we will engage in a friendly competition to complete a list of these advantages. Trent Tamer and I have had the opportunity to each develop a list of 10 pros of growing older. Off camera, we flip coins to see which order in which we would conduct this game. Tamara won the liberty of growing first, followed by me and then Trent. Sorry, Trent. Better luck next time. Oh. <laughs> okay. So the way we will do this is Tamara will read a pro from her list. And if Trent has that on her list and I have it on my list, we will cross it off. I will follow Tamara. And if I have what's on their list, they will cross it off. Then Trent will have say her, what's on her list, and whoever has that word will cross it off. Who has the most remaining words on their list will be the winner. Ms. Tamara, I think you're going first. All right. The first one I have on my list is retirement. <laughs> got me. Okay. I think I got that on my list, so I'm going to have to mark that off. Oh. <laughs> yep. Okay, uh, the first thing I have on my list is one of the pros of going older is wisdom. Uh, I got to mark that one off. I have to mark that one. That's two. Bummer. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. All right. How about for me, senior discounts? Uh, you wow. got me. You got me, Trent. Yeah, I have to mark that off too. You must have been looking at my list. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't cheat now. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
wasn't All you. Right. <laughs> so I had to skip two. Um, respect is the next one on my list. Okay. Yeah. I don't have that one. Oh, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. We've all, we all, we all earn that respect, right? right. Yeah, that's absolutely, right. absolutely. Uh, so, getting Social Security. That was a good one. I didn't have that one. No, I don't have that one. All right. How about more mature relationships? Okay. Yeah. That's a, that, that was great. I didn't one. have that on my I list. Didn't have oh, yeah. I didn't think about that, but they are. You do this. <laughs> All right. I have uh, financial stability. Financial okay. stability. Okay. I think I had to cross that off. All right, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, ne I'm next. I think I have vacation. Oh, vacation. Oh, uh, yeah. Here? You always can do that whenever you want. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have learning new hobbies. Does that fall into that, maybe? Mm, I wouldn't oh. say so. All right. Nah, okay. That was, a good, that was a good one. All right. All right. How about no set bedtime or get up time? Well, I've had that on my list. I've had to cross it off. Okay. You got you like you had to cross off too, Mr. Yeah, Man. No, yeah, sleeping late and no alarm clock. I think uh, I cheated. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to cheat. I put I put two things in one. Ms. Tamara. All right. So I have close parking spots. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Don't have it. No. Though. I didn't think of that one. one. I have no little kids in the house, but I'm not sure that after thinking about that, but I'm going to stick with it. No little kids in the house. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? I had raised my children. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the same thing. So I think that you got me on that one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I raised my children. All right. Let's see. What about volunteering? Volunteering, having time to volunteer. Yeah, that's a good one. That's what? a good one. That one? Yeah. All right, my next one was enjoying grandchildren. Got me. Hey, yeah. I think I do, because you got what, playing with grandchildren? Yeah, I do. Cross that's it off, yeah, cross train. that cross off. It okay, off. <laughs> cross it off. I guess I'll get to play with my, well, I don't have grandchildren yet, but when <laughs> I do get them, can I play with them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Okay, next I have going to the Y or Recreation Center. That was a good one. Yeah, that was good. I only have two things left, so I hope I win. I think I'm gonna gain up on you. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I've got some. Mm -mm. All right, uh, clear priorities. Oh, that was good. Clear priorities. Yeah, that was great. And then one. Get that one. All right, uh, I didn't have that one. So I have relaxation. What do y'all think about that one? Okay, yeah, All I right. don't have that one. It's a good one. So uh, the next one I have is don't have to get dressed. You're going to retire, you can lay around in your pajamas <laughs> all day. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that one. That yeah. is great. That is great. All right. You know what? I, I'm not sure I have one because I think I, you guys is learning new hobbies like relaxation. I don't know. Would that be? No, nah, I well, think that's something different. It's, it's, I, I got that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yay. All right. I have a flexible schedule. Oh, I uh, don't have that. Nope. This is my last one, so look like I'm going to be the first one out. No. Nope. Uh, eating whenever I want to. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. a good one. Actually, learn. Yeah, no, I'm all, I'm all out too. Nobody has nothing else. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, my last one was less responsibility. <sighs> oh wow, great. Yeah. Tamara, look like you're our winner. <laughs> Looks like you got lucky again. First one and also won the game. Uh, <laughs> wait, a wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want I want to play again. <laughs> <laughs> can't take our stuff from our list now. Right. I know. I know. I right. know. 
Well, everyone, this completes our lesson two on aging sensitivity. I hope you all enjoyed this activity, and now Tamara will give us a recap on today's lesson. All right. Well, today's lesson, we went over three activities where we talked about um, the effects of aging on our body, organs, and systems, and we also learned about um, what aging is in the new millennium, and we developed a new uh, statement of aging in the new millennium. And we also covered um, the pros of growing older, so it's just not about just thinking negatively. Well, we had um, some things like getting to retire, playing with your grandchildren, um, no alarm clock. So those were all pretty fun and engaging, and it gave us a new light of how to look at aging in the uh, new millennium and being sensitive to the ways that we age based on how our bodies change. All right, everyone, and this is going to complete our um, lesson two on aging sensitivity. Uh, we hope that you all enjoyed and took good notes and participated along with us. And if you want any more information about any of the things that we went over today or handouts from this segment or previous segments, you may contact Ms. Gail Daffler with Goodwill Easter Seals of Miami Valley mm -hmm. or myself, Tamara Cantrell with Umadop of Dayton. And our information will be displayed on the screens there. That's Goodwill's information. And that's again, that's Ms. Gail Daffler. Mm -hmm. And then we have Umadop of Dayton and that's myself, Tamara Cantrell. And our contacts are there. All right, so next up, um, we have our podcast that's going to be airing at 4.30, and you can find that on Goodwill Easter Seals Facebook Live, and that's going to have Miss Adina Wingfield and Gail Daffler um, from Goodwill Easter Seals, and that, again, that'll be on at 4.30 on Facebook Live, and you can locate that on Goodwill Easter Seals Facebook page. And that conversation will be talking about aging gracefully. So make sure you tune into that and get some more feedback on today's lesson. Absolutely. All right. All well, right. we don't have anything else for you. So until next time, take care. My name is Gail Daffler, and I'm the prevention coordinator at Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley. Welcome to our second podcast for WISE, which means the Wellness Initiative for Senior Education. Thank you so much for tuning into our DATV um, television show that aired at 3 p.m. Um, with the, our host from UMADOP, Tamara Kentrell and Michael Mann, as well as our co-worker, Trent Smith. You guys did a fantastic job. We're just really proud to, to be on our podcast and follow up with some great information. I would love to introduce to you one of my favorite co-workers, that I've worked with for a very long time, Miss Adina Wingfield. Awesome. It is so wonderful to be here, Gail. Again, my name is Adina Wingfield, everyone, prevention specialist with Goodwill Easter Seals. Happy to be a part of this wonderful team partnering with UMADOP. And I want to remind our listeners to just catch up on our show every third Tuesday at 3 p.m., then there's a second Wednesday at 10 p.m. and third Fridays at noon. There's an additional day, Thursdays at 3 p.m. that this will replay. And our podcast today will be connected to DATV and our Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley page, our Facebook page, in addition to Umadop's YouTube pages. So this is an awesome day, and I'm just so glad that we are um, able to share with Umadop. And UMADOP is a great program that we are working with um, our partners, uh, Michael Mann and Tamara Cantrell. And we have put together a great system with our WISE program. Again, WISE stands for the Wellness Initiative for Senior Education. So I'm going to tell a little bit more about UMADOP. So UMADOP's history. It stands for the Dayton Urban Minority Alcoholism and Drug Abuse Outreach Program. And UMADOP, they offer alcohol, tobacco, and other drug prevention education for adults, for children, seniors, and also they have a reentry program for ex-offenders and even a summer camp. 
In addition, UMADOT offers outpatient treatment services. Individual and group services are available. To reach UMADOP, led by Dr. Marquita Robinson. Again, UMADOP is led by Dr. Marquita Robinson. The number is 937-276-2176. That number again is 937-276-2176. And we hopefully will put that in our chat. We have Justine Bauer, our new co-worker, uh, working in our live chat. And hopefully she can get these numbers down for you. Please take time to get a pen and paper and go along with us to collect some information that we love to share with you all today. And I'll turn this back over to Gail to tell about Goodwill's history. Thank you so much, Adina. And please remember, if you do have any questions or need any information, please let Justine know in the chat. She will gladly connect you with that information. And if we need to wait a day or two to find that information, we will definitely get that to you. Um, I do want to take a minute to talk about Goodwill Easter Seals and highlight three programs through Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley. The first one is our prescription medication safety campaign, which is part of our prevention programs at Goodwill. Um, we go out to area pharmacies, physicians' offices, um, and we give out medication disposal pouches, and we encourage our, our providers to, to educate our community about best practices around medication use, disposal, and also storage. And we also give presentations to area groups, whether it's as young as kindergartners and um, to any age group uh, about best practices around medication. And, and Dina, I wanna ask you something really, really quick. Sure. What is, what, what is, the, be what is the best place to store your medication? The best place to store medication is up high in a locked box or a locked container somewhere up high and out of the way. Mm -hmm. And that's something if, if you if you are if you have some medication in your home and you're concerned about it, its safety um, and that's and you're looking for a locked box, please let us know at Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley. My name's Gail. Please give me a call at area code 937-461. 4800. We are giving out lock boxes to people who need medication, their medication stored safely. So you're able to give me a call and let me know that. Awesome. And so we work for behavioral health and Don Cooksey is the director of behavioral health. And so we're happy to announce that we also have Main Street Recovery Center um, that is overseen by behavioral health. Um, our Goodwill Easter Seas Seals Main Street Recovery Center provides counseling, diagnostic assessment and case management for people dealing with mental health or substance abuse issues. The program also offers mental health services for children, as well as individual and group counseling sessions. In addition, we offer psychiatry services, including medication-assisted treatment for substance abuse issues. So again, that is Main Street Recovery Center. Great. And I want to tell a little bit about our Miracle Clubhouse at Goodwill Easter Seals. At the heart of the Miracle Clubhouse is the belief that every member can sufficiently recover from the effects of mental illness to lead a personally satisfying and productive life. Together, the members and staff participate in activities that provide a solid foundation for growth, self-respect, and individual accomplishment. Decision-making and um, governing involves members and staff working together to develop the clubhouse plans. So every day they work together to, to, to check on each other um, and, and, to, and to make the clubhouse work together. They also have like a work program that helps um, have some of the, the um, members get connected to employment, which is just fantastic. For more information about any of the Goodwill programs, feel free to give us a call at area code 937-461-4800. And I'm going to speak a little bit more about a couple more pro programs related to WISE. Uh, one program is a senior program that Goodwill Easter Seals offers called CSEP for short. And it's the Senior Community Service Employment Program. And that's led by Jean Ritchie. And the Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley CSEP program provides employment options for mature 
talented group of workers with work ethics, enthusiasm, and life experiences that are essential for today's workforce. So by referring to those you serve to our CSEP program, you are offering a chance for those individuals age 55 and older to gain a fresh start with on-the-job training and employment opportunities. In turn, employers gain valuable new employees who bring experience and desire to learn the job. So who's eligible? Let's talk about that. You should be 55 years of age or older. Maybe you've experienced barriers to employment. Maybe there's limited or low income. And, of course, you're unemployed at the time. So there's some, uh, a number to call here, 937-528-6540. That's 937-528-6540 for more information about CSEP. There also is another program on the rise since COVID. There were a few programs that we did have to shut down for a moment, but look forward to a matter of balance returning in the next couple of months. Um, And matter of balance helps older adults to keep their balance and to learn how to work safely at home. Uh, Many older adults experience concerns about falling and restrict their activities. A Matter of Balance is an award-winning program designed to manage falls and increase activity levels. So the program emphasizes practical strategies to accomplish personal goals. And so there'll be training and classroom activities, and we're gonna just be able to connect with Sharon Mitchell, our program coordinator, for more information. And here's another number for you to write down, 937 Five two eight six three five nine. That's nine three seven five two eight six three five nine. For more information about Matter of Balance, contact Sharon Mitchell. And Miss Adina, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on with COVID nineteen in our community. Oh yes, yeah. So um, there's a lot of things changing right now, and um, we just kind of wanted to give an updated some updated information. Um, to our listeners. So um, the current vaccine registrations, um, there's a few clinics coming up on Thursday, March 18th from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Um, at the Dayton Convention Center. You were able to call and, um, and schedule schedule your, your vaccination. Please call the phone number 937-225-6217. And can you tell us about the Friday event, Miss Dina? Okay. I see that there's Friday, March 19th at the Minority Outreach Clinic. That's, again, Friday, March 19th at the Minority Outreach Clinic, scheduled from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and that's at Bethesda Temple. You know, if you have questions about these locations, again, please take the number to public health and ask plenty of questions at 937-225-6217. Great. We want to go over a little bit about the Greater Dayton RTA because they are just a great um, great resource in our community. They're get, offering three free options to get to the clinics. Option number one is when boarding any bus, simply present your appointment registration in print or on your mobile device and or your COVID-19 shot record, or when traveling to a pop-up or walk-up vaccination site, let the driver know that upon boarding. Awesome. Now here's the second option. It says customers who do not have access to a bus route can still schedule their vaccine trip on RTA's Connect services. To schedule a trip, call 937-425-8300. Reservations can be made seven days a week between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. And same-day reservations will be considered subject to availability. RTA or one of its qualified providers will provide transportation service. Okay, option number three is when traveling to the convention center or the Bethesda Temple sites, you can board a free shuttle at the RTA's downtown transit center. The pickup and drop-off are located on 3rd Street between Main and Jefferson Streets. Service runs 
when these sites are in operation. So service begins 30 minutes before the site opens and will run until the last customer is transported back. That's awesome information. And we can find all of these things, again, on the websites and through calling, contacting mm -hmm. Public Health. And I want to remind our listeners that if they're, if they're considering the vaccination and have many questions, another person that they can talk to is their medical physician. You know, and ask, you know, especially if you have medical conditions, to see if this is a good option for you. Or if you're taking certain medications, just to make sure there's no interactions with the medications that you're taking. Absolutely. And we also just want to make sure we're continuing to stay safe, staying masked up, and keeping social distance. It is very important to keep our hands washed and continue. As things get better, they're getting better because we're doing what we're supposed to do. We're doing what the governor has asked us to do and trying to, to help each other out. So everybody, thanks for doing a great job. And we're so excited about this warmer weather as well, right? It's been great outside, hasn't it? It's been super outside, and just to see that there's some events that are going on outside, to see them on the schedules, it just makes my, my heart feel, like, uplifted, and I'm really looking forward to being able to go out and, and do some more activities, Miss Dina. Mm -hmm. So we hope everyone is feeling pretty good, and we're going to switch over to our topic for today. What is our topic, Gail? Oh, my goodness. Our topic for today is aging sensitivity. Now, that could be a lot of different things, couldn't it, Dina? It can. It can. And we're just kind of exploring, you know. Today uh, on the show, they explored what it meant to age in our larger society and for each of us personally. So there was a lot of different things that we went over today about how our bodies change even as we age. And so no one's exempt from that. You know, we're, we're definitely all aging. And so it was a great show, and I hope you all can catch up on that at another day. Right, and that's something that you can definitely watch again on a rerun on DATV. Um, and I'll go over those times again here really quickly. They are, a lot, um, they are every second Wednesday at 10 p.m., every third Friday uh, at, at, at 12 p.m., and Thursdays at 3 p.m. You can also catch the, the live t or the TV show on the YouTube channel from DATV. So they, they have that um, on there and you're able to t watch that at any time at your leisure, which is really nice, right, Dina? That's right. So you had a subtopic here, Gail, that says, how you asked how do we age here with sophistication and elegance? I really like that. I love that because like, as we get older, what, how can we be genuine to ourselves? Mm -hmm. You know, and how can we enjoy life to the, you know, make it the best life that we can? Absolutely. You know, life is uh, is just beginning, you know, a, a different form of it as we age. You know, we in this program, we are encouraging positive attitudes and thriving as, as you age. It is it's okay to um, accept change. That's what I'm learning. Just learning to manage change, uh, even those aches and pains. You know, they come they come with the territory, but there are some things we're going to learn in our classes along the way to help combat some of that. We don't have to live with pain all the time. So we'll share some of that as we go along. Absolutely. Should we look at like recapping last week? Sure. Great. So last week we looked at understanding changes associated with aging and, and thinking about, like, what Miss Dina said, talking about those changes, because sometimes that's really, really tough to get through. Oh, yes. And then we looked at aging as individualized, because what could happen to one person might not happen to the next. And I know sometimes I look at the, a, a person, I'm like, why, why can't my life be like that? Why are they, why could, why do they get around a lot easier than me? Or, you know, why am I challenged in this area and they're not? So, you know, understanding that sometimes there's things that are very individualized. 
Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, our behaviors and attitudes toward health and wellness are a big part of it. And so I'm glad that those who are joining us, we're joining into a movement mm-hmm. about health and wellness and um, finding the good things that we can do to challenge ourselves, even though we may not have done it before, we can start. You can start new things at any time. So I'm excited about that. Today is the day. Today is the day. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. Um, our lesson um, last week, we had a trivia lesson, and, and it got a little heavy. We talked about number one causes of death. You know, um, the month of February is Heart Health Awareness Month, especially for women um, with heart disease being a number one cause of death for many women. Um, but in the in the world, the number one cause of death for community members 55 and above is heart disease. So we've decided that Heart Awareness Month is every month. Every month we want to challenge everyone to pay attention to some of the risks of um, our heart health that associated with heart health. And, and can you name some of those risks, Gail? Absolutely. Number one, whenever I think of our heart health, is smoking. Mm-hmm. You know that you know that's it's just such a high risk with your heart, whether that's smoking tobacco or, or vaping. You know, making sure that you make great decisions around that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and with smoking, you know, it's a tough one. That's a tough one for mm-hmm. people to discontinue. But there are programs, there's wellness options to, to try to, to stop doing that. But we're, we're not judging anyone here. Again, mm-hmm. this is a judgment-free zone, but we do want everyone to, to experience a healthier life. Can you think of anything else that would help out with the heart health, Miss Dina? Mm, our diet. Oh, my goodness. I love Big Macs. <laughs> I, know, I know many people love to eat all of the fast food. But you know what? It's time to cut back. It's time for more greens and, and healthier food. Um, in addition to that, uh, let's switch out some of that pop, that Coca-Cola. Or, you know, there's the debate. Coca-Cola or Pepsi? Hmm, which one is it? I'm not even going to go there, but there's this certain pops we like. RC, mm-hmm. Whatever the cola is, there, there's different things that we can do. We can drink more water. Uh, and I'll just say what, what I've said before. Drinking half of our body weight in ounces per day is the way to go. <laughs> it, that, that, the water is just such a great, healthy way and it helps out with, like, say, stress reduction as well. It helps us in so many ways, Dina. And, and what just a great way, what a great first step just to become healthier is just to drink the, a bottle of water. Oh, yes. So when I think about heart health, I think about alcohol consumption too, you know. And, and that it can be just as simple as just making sure that we only have one serving of alcohol. You know, sometimes when we, we're, we're out with our friends or we're having a dinner, you know, we might have two drinks with our meal or three drinks. So, you know, making sure that we limit that and, you know, maintain that. So, you know, so, so maybe having just one glass of red wine with our meal instead of two or three. So that, that's a huge way that we can make sure our heart's healthier. Absolutely. And the pandemic has brought on a lot of people drinking more. You're at home more. A lot of stressors are going on. Maybe grandparents are keeping the grandkids. Are you homeschooling some of them? There may be a little bit of things that you say, oh, I I might do a little more of that. But we are here to bring you some other options, some alternatives to um, combat that that desire to to do a little more of that because we want everyone to stay safe and healthy. So another part of uh, heart health, you know, we're just so, so glad that people are looking more into really moving forward with less alcohol consumption. So I want to I want to ask the viewers if they've like made any changes since our last show. What are you doing right now to make to promote health in your life? You know. Are you know? Are you getting up and moving around more? Are you having more conversations with your neighbors? Are you, you know, are are you working with your medical team more? You know, or have you have you decided I'm gonna I'm gonna have a few vegetables during this meal? You know, what are you doing? Are you are you more creative? So, what are some of those steps that you're taking to be proactive with your life? 
Well, I know what I changed since last show. I I mean, I definitely took more water mm-hmm. in. It's very important. And I decided, uh, I, t- I said earlier, I joined the gym. I decided to actually go to that gym. <laughs> Because don't we often sign up for things and, and not participate? That's a strange notion, but I know I'm not alone, right? Mm-hmm. So I decided to actually go. So I'm going to add to my calendar, add myself to my calendar. I encourage everyone to um, do a little self-care and add yourself to your mm-hmm. schedule so that you can can add in water intake and healthy diet and exercise into that daily plan. I've been exercising a little bit more. I've been, I love getting out and walking, especially while I have, I have dogs, so I love to get out and walk with them. So, you know, it's getting a little bit warmer. We're able to get out and move around and, and just to have interaction, you know, with our environment, which is wonderful. I love breathing in the fresh air while I'm on, on those walks. So um, that's one thing that I'm going to continue and hopefully be able to be outside more. I just love it. L- the sunshine on my skin just feels so good. Awesome. So what areas do we need to keep an eye on to help us to be healthier? So in the last session, we did talk about like depression and we talked about just isolation, especially with COVID-19 and, and, and what can we do just to kind of feel better around those areas because I think we're all challenged aren't we in those areas Miss Dina absolutely and you know your mental health matters it is okay to feel you know so there's grief going on there's a lot of loss and and different things happening around us it may not be directly in our face but it's, it's all around us and so we have empathy for those who are suffering so it's great to acknowledge our feelings and if we need some help Remember, there's some um, special numbers we said earlier. Go ahead and get some help. It may be therapy. It may just be going to find a friend and to ease your mind. But it's okay to feel um, sad sometimes. But we don't want to stay there. So we have to find what brings us joy. Want to tell me what brings you joy, Gail? Oh, my God. Oh, I have lots of things that bring me joy. But, you know, when I think about, like, say, all the isolation, Mm -hmm. you know, I think about just having those phone calls with friends that I haven't been able to see in such a long time, Mm -hmm. haven't been able to spend time with, or or the family members that I haven't been able to to see, you know, in person. So making sure I I, I take that time and, and, and call them and talk to them, check in on them, that's been a huge thing for me. That yeah. bring, brings me lots of joy. What's something that brings you joy? Oh, my goodness. I love my pets. Yes. <laughs> Taking care of my animals, having something to take care of um, that left you back. Just They're so sweet. Uh, I have several puppies that were born. And <laughs> anyway, it's just been really nice to take care of my animals and enjoy their company. So we just we have to do what works best for us. If, if you like to do art, do things that make you happy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and sometimes just when I, th- I think about just checking in on my neighbors, that right there is, is having those like um, conversations from the porch uh, and the sidewalk. How are you doing, neighbor? You know, just getting to know people a little bit more because there, there's so much isolation right now. And, and having that disconnect affects our well-being. So I think that be really creative about that, mm-hmm. you know, and I love all the, the schools are having parades to, you know, in, in cars so that, that the young people, you know, they aren't missing out on different activities. Just you know, and, and I actually, one of our coworkers had a parade for her husband that turned 70 years old. So he was out in the front yard, Dina, and then the, the, um, the people who wanted to wish him a happy birthday drove by and dropped off presents. Oh, that's nice. And, and, you know, and I'm like, what a creative way to say happy birthday even and, and to stay safe. That's right. This pandemic does not have to end our connection to one another. We can find creative ways to connect. I love that you said talk across the street, you know, or just asking one another what we need. Giving always helps me to feel better when I'm feeling down. So that's a great way. Socialization and connection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and thinking about how we can use technology to keep ourselves, like, say, connected, whether that's learning how to use Zoom, mm-hmm. learning how to use FaceTime on Messenger on Facebook, um, 
that's something um, I hope my mom's on, on on the recording here, but she has used FaceTime. I'm so proud of her. Oh, yeah. You know, she's 84 years old and she knows how to use that and like has made different phone calls that way so she could see people. What a great gift to have. And and I love that pe- I love people are open. I know I'm opening up to different technology and we're learning things, and it, and it feels great when we do that, doesn't it, Dina? It is very rewarding. Mm-hmm. Another thing is, you know, maybe we don't want to go to the grocery store right now, but guess mm-hmm. what? You can learn to order groceries online. And if it's too much for some that say, I don't want to, I don't want to bother with technology, you ha- hopefully you have some neighbors or a friend to ask and say, can you order this for me and help me out? That way you can just pick up your groceries curbside and go ahead and have those quickly done for you um, without a lot of hassle. Mm -hmm. So we asked about that, about family members helping you, about friends. And if if you're struggling with help, you know, reach out to community um, service centers like the Miracle Clubhouse. There's connection there with people that can help you to engage with groups of people and, and develop new friendships. Thank you so much. And I know that that's been a really a big challenge for people. I think sometimes we don't want to ask for help. You know, we are very, very, very proud. And, and like sometimes it's, it's tough, but I, I see people opening up to this and welcoming it. So what a great gift to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. So aging in a new millennium. What is that like? <laughs> Let me tell you, Dina. Okay, tell Let me, me tell about, you all about it. Tell me all about it. <laughs> so, so when we when we look at that, like age, especially during the pandemic, oh my goodness, I, I feel like I've gained ten or fifteen years this pandemic. Oh, okay, you know, and and but I think I've gained so much awareness of. Um, our connections in our community. Mm-hmm. I've gained a lot of awareness about how kind people are. And, and like you said, about all the giving that's gone on in our community. It is amazing to see that. Um, and that's something that, um, and, and just being open to, um, to all the changes associated with aging. Huge, huge step. Yeah, embracing the change, actually. Mm -hmm. That's a tough part for a lot of people. Um, Understanding the value of time, you know, acknowledging that aging is not always easy, Mm -hmm. but it's worth the experience that we learn along the way. Um, And we're just learning about the beauty of love, life, family, and friendship. This pandemic, if nothing else, has helped lots of people to learn what matters most. What do we really care about? You know, we can't get all fashioned up and go a whole lot of places. So all those clothes I had, I'm like, where do I wear, <laughs> where do I wear this to? So a lot of changes have happened with that even. So I hope some people can relate and go ahead and put that in the chat about what things do you re- relate about that um, have helped you to be more aware of, of just change and, and, and what has this done in a positive way? I mean, as far mm-hmm. as um, what, what all of this major change has occurred, what's happened? Right. And then what what are some things that, that like like Adina said, what are some things that are important to you? Is it having fun? Is it that connection with our family? You know, is it is it uh, valuing like say principles? Um, so look looking into ourselves and figuring out what we need so that we can proceed and that we can find that happiness that we also well deserve. The other part is, where's that fun? Mm-hmm. You know, like this, this past year has not been very fun. Oh, <laughs> it goodness. is, but it felt like a big burden. And so, um, I know during the TV show, somebody said having fun. Yes. Let's all have fun this year. Let's all like lighten up and have a good time because that is something that I think we all deserve that. Mm-hmm. I love to see people just dancing, you know, just do a video of you dancing and <laughs> having a good time to your favorite music. It is just time to, to really just kind of let your hair down and relax it's been pretty stressful but things are getting better Mm -hmm. they're getting better we just need to stay active and enjoy our lives Mm -hmm. so there's a question here about some ways to manage isolation in this time of the pandemic we kind of went over that but isolation is major some of us may be afraid to go outside I encourage everyone to please step outside and get fresh air daily. You may not want to go a lot of places, but if you do, just remember to keep your hands washed and mask up. 
Make sure you wear mm-hmm. your mask. And if you want a double mask, that's fine, too. Um, and also try to get your vaccination if you feel comfortable doing that. I've noticed so many people in the parks um, walking in the neighborhoods with their mask on. And, and that, that I think that helps just to bring um, like a sense of like safety. So thank you to all of our community members who are doing that, practicing those safety steps, because that helps out everyone to feel more safe. And, and it, for the people who may be concerned about going out in the community, that helps them to see that people are willing to practice those safety steps. Dina, I'm, I'm looking at this and, and I love this question. What are some ways to have fun though? Like what are some <laughs> things that we can do just to promote like being lighthearted and having a good time, but also being safe? Oh my goodness. You know, the, the internet, once again, there's YouTube. There's a lot of things. Maybe you enjoy line dancing. You can pull up a line dance of your favorite uh, video and dance along to that. Um, there's exercise videos, just lots of things we can look at. Again, you, you mentioned FaceTime. Get on a call with a group of family members and play a family game. You can do it virtually. It's okay. Get, get a deck of cards. Uh, try to play it or do some Pictionary. You know, some things we can do like that. Um, there's so much. But we have to get creative. And one of my favorite things to do, a lot of people say, I can't do it, but paint. Draw pictures and paint. It is so relaxing, and you won't regret it. Now, some people just flat out say, no, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not an artist. It's not me. But, but give it a try. If, try new things, and that's how we mm-hmm. learn to have fun. Mm-hmm. I love painting, especially when you have, um, like, the – the the deep sea music Mm -hmm. go to youtube look for the deep sea music it's very relaxing and sometimes there's a video of like dolphins connected to it so it's like this beautiful scenery from the sea and you're painting and it's almost like you get lost in the painting right dina absolutely and you don't even know that you're painting once you really get into it and and then it's it's all about creating and being in the moment it's it's wonderful it just brings a sense of relief such a great stress reducer Definitely. And crossword puzzles, you know, those are underrated, but those get fun and just trivia. In addition to keeping our minds going, reading and and different things like that. Those are fun things and some things that are uh, lost art because of all the technology. So some of our fun is um, what is my technology detox? What am I going to get away from? Because I've had too much of a thing. And, um, and some of it is the reverse, maybe to learn more technology. So it depends on where you are in your um, process, but we are um, advocating for you to have fun. <laughs> Lots of it. In Dayton Public Library, they're currently open, and they're practicing really great measures to keep us all safe um, and, and sanitizing you know, all the books that go out. Um, so that's something that you can go to any of their locations and, and, and find really great reading um, for yourself. So next up, we want to go over some agency highlights and some things that we're doing to help our community um, cope with COVID-19 and various things. We have the Miami Valley Warm Line. Our number at the Miami Valley Warm Line is 937-528-7777. Seven, seven. And that line is open Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can call this number if you're dealing with stress or anxiety, uh, various things. And we help to provide resources and referrals if you're dealing with, uh, if you're battling with mental health, alcohol, or addiction. Please contact our warm line at 937 528 7777. Thank you, Ms. Adina. I want to talk a little bit about Oak Street Health. They just opened up back in August of this past year, and they're located at 1431 Wayne Avenue in Dayton, Ohio. They have an on-site care team that specializes in internal medicine, family medicine, senior care, preventative medicine, and geriatric medicine. They invite you to connect with their team of nurse practitioners, primary care physicians, and doctors through your choice of an in-person, phone, or video visit. I love that. I love those options. So you get to kind of let them know what you're comfortable with. 
Their team can provide you with rides to and from the Oak Street Health Walnut Hills location. I love that um, they do have to be in the right service area, but that is wonderful that they're able to help out with that. This location welcomes patients who speak English and Spanish via their dedicated multilingual care team. You could talk with one of their internal medicine or geriatric doctors for a tailored approach to primary care. Um, their trusted general practitioners and local doctors at the Oak Street Health Health Walnut Hills location accept Medicare, Medicare Advantage, Humana, um, and other insurance um, through your Medicare and Medicare Advantage benefits, social services, and other health care resources. The Oak Street Health location is in the 45410 area code in Dayton, Ohio. Same day and next day appointments are available at this location with minimal, with minimal weights and times. Awesome. You can call them for more information at area code 937 660-3149. Wow, that's an awesome resource, Oak Street Health of Walnut Hills. We also have the Area Agency on Aging, a very optimal resource for people. Um, help comes in many forms. If you need assistance, they say contact them. They start by listening to your story. Um, and from there, they think of ways to make your day easier, customizing a plan that's right for you and delivering services that give you the help you need to stay as, an, as independent as possible. Please give them a call. They have a number for you to call uh, to contact 223-HELP. That's 223-H-E-L-P or 800-258-7277. There's a lot of information we're giving you today, but again, you'll be able to watch the replay here. And so we'll share that at the end of our podcast so that you can replay this if you need to hear more. But Area Agency on Agency also has several wellness programs. I see Healthy You that offers three workshops about chronic disease, diabetes, and chronic pain. Many of us deal with chronic pain, and so that looks like a great program. Um, and it provides proven tools to help participants better self-manage chronic conditions. There's also the Aging Mastery Program. That includes 10 sessions presented by experts that focus on managing health. So there's so much out here right. and just many, many resources. But we wanted to mention the Area Agency on Aging as one of our highlights today. Absolutely. They also have a Healthy You for at-home diabetes. They have a phone discussion group um, and also a Healthy You at Home online workshop for chronic disease. So please give them a call and learn more about their services. And their phone number again is area code 937-223-HELP. So, Dina, let's go over a little bit about some protective factors that we can, we, we can um, practice every day in our lives. So, um, especially around, like say, just our, our, our mental well-being and our physical well-being. So I really wanted to talk a little bit about like what social isolation does to us. Okay. And um, a lot of, like we're looking at like all this isolation and loneliness um, that we're dealing with, especially around COVID-19, it was already something I think our community was dealing with mm -hmm. because there's just been so many changes around how we communicate, how we interact with each other. And um, I just think the COVID-19 has just really amplified everything. Very true. And so when we look at this, um, the stress of being lonely, like that, that, that amplifies our, our mental well-being if we have a condition. So making sure we get connected to great services um, and that we're connected to our community members, our family members, because even though sometimes it might be difficult to ask for that help, it really helps out our health and well-being. Absolutely. So the social engagement is huge too. So making sure that we we stay involved and, and looking at our, our, our groups that we can become involved with, whether that's like say a church group, it could be like say a service program, um, it could be something even online, but but 
thinking about like say I know I'm involved with a couple of like say service groups. I do I'm on a couple of committees and I have totally missed them this year. Um, and they're connected to the arts and crafts. Mm-hmm. And so I love my arts and crafts and, and like I have very much missed interacting with my committee members and making uh, events happen here in the Dayton area. And that's been a big loss for me. And, and, and that's something where, you know, making sure that, that we, we help each other out and we get connected to more things. Can you, can you think of some other ways people can become, you know, better connected? Absolutely. I, I'm sorry to hear that that's been hard for you. I know it's been hard for a lot of people, but one thing I would suggest is go ahead and look to the future with goal setting. Go ahead and plan those things about when we're getting together next. Maybe it's in the next 90 days. We are traveling. We're going to do something. Maybe it's not too far out, but making plans is definitely going to help um, to open our minds to get really excited about what's coming. So as, as we kind of get to finding about things that make us feel better and, and risk, reducing risk and intervention with isolation, there's some things that we can do to stay more healthy. Mm-hmm. And, and one of these things, um, we can stay more physically active, right? We can reduce and manage our cardiovascular disease risk factors, including hypertension, diabetes, and smoking. We can regularly discuss and review our health conditions and medications that might influence our mental health um, with the healthcare professional. Make sure you do that. Have great conversations with your doctor. Be socially and intellectually engaged and engage in lifelong learning. We talked about this today. It's so wonderful. Get adequate sleep. Oh, my goodness. Do you get enough sleep, Gail? Sometimes I don't get enough sleep, and I can tell when it affects me. Mm-hmm. And that, but sleep is such a huge thing, and it's it's one of the easiest things that we can include in our lives to feel better. Whether that's you know to just to feel healthier, to feel more socially connected, and to reduce stress. Absolutely. Um, take steps to avoid the risk of cognitive changes due to delirium if hospitalized. And carefully evaluate products advertised to consumers um, to improve cognitive health, such as medications um, and nutritional documents. But we really, you know, when we deal with all of these things, we just need to make sure that we understand what the doctor said. Really, really make sure you have great conversations with your doctor and let them spend time with you. Don't, Don't get rushed, even if it's on telehealth. Take time and have your questions written down, right? We want people to write down their questions and and talk about those new aches and pains. Even make sure you talk about what's feeling better because maybe we can get off of some of that medicine. So I want to go back to you, Gail, with that. Well, and also when we, there's really great outlines for questions from takechargeohio.com. That is, uh, that is, they have questions like why am I taking this medication will it have any drug interactions with other medications that I'm taking is this something that I can become addicted to Mm -hmm. those are just some really great questions that we want to ask our physician because our health and well-being that we need to be proactive with that we need to advocate for ourselves and we we need to search for the best solutions for ourselves so making sure that we ask those questions and having those conversations. And if you need a longer conversation with your physician, letting them know that so that maybe they could set aside some more time or maybe schedule another time to t- discuss that with you. Another person that's great to talk to, though, is that pharmacist. Your pharmacy team can answer those questions for you as well and give you the information that you so well deserve. Because one thing that I know that working with this team We're all advocates, and we want to advocate for ourselves and for our family members. Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that because each week we're going to remind everyone about our medication disposal pouch program. If you need some medication disposal pouches, how can they get those, Gail? Absolutely. Thank you, Dina. They can call at Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley, and we can make sure that they get a few. So what we encourage everybody to do is to go through your house, see what medications you currently have, Um, and see what medications you're no longer using out of that. Sometimes we have things in nooks and crannies in our house, and and we don't even know that they're there. So go through your whole house. And that medication you no longer use, 
either take that to one of the many, many drug um, drug um, drop box sites here in Montgomery County. Most of our police departments have them on site. Um, most of our hospitals have them in their pharmacy. Um, and we are also have uh, additional locations at some of the pharmacies, um, whether that's CVS or some of the other pharmacies. So please let us know so we can connect you with that information. But uh, if you want a uh, medication um, pouch, please give us a call at Goodwill Easter Seals. Ask for me, Gail Daffler. The telephone number is area code 937-461-4800. Okay, and so we are going to go to some of our closing remarks here. So, Dina, let's let's go over, some, let's review some of our information that we went over and encourage people to contact our great resources. The first resource that I want to make sure to remind um, our listeners and our viewers to contact is public health. If you have any questions about COVID-19 or if you have any questions about where the vaccination sites are, their phone number again is area code 937-225-6217. Again, that's area code 937-225-6217. And y'all have been so great today. We want to thank you all for tuning in and listening to us. We will be back next month, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Every Absolutely. third Tuesday up through July. And uh, we'll be talking to you about some wonderful topics. Our next lesson will be on cultural diversity. So we're just going to have a fun time um, dealing with that and storytelling. So we are um, thankful for you all today. And we're going to sign off and say thank you very much and be well, right? Be, thank you so much, everybody. We have had a fantastic time. Um, with this podcast. This is my first podcast, so this is a great time. So thank you for listening. Uh, I see that we've had some um, interaction in the chat. So thanks for, you know, um, talking with um, Justine and with Trent. Um, and we are really looking forward to our upcoming show. Please um, tune in to us next month on the third Tuesday of the month. Our next podcast will be at 430. Thank you again, everybody, and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.